Now this is a hub motor from a hoverboard. You might be asking yourself, what is a hoverboard? And I could tell you that they are kind of like e-scooters, but way worse because they are only slightly faster than simply walking. That is also why you can nowadays get them super cheap second hand. Or as we would say it in Saxony, die kriegst du für ein Abel und ein Ei. Now I decided to only get a hoverboard motor because its electrical properties are quite fascinating. I mean look, I'm using 10 volts DC in order to rotate the motor this fast, which admittedly is actually pretty slow. It is so slow that I can easily reach such a rotation speed by using my hands. And that is the point where it gets super interesting. If I can use 10 volts to turn the motor slow, shouldn't it be possible to turn the motor slow by myself and therefore getting 10 volts on the outputs? To test this, I added a 1 watt LED between two wires of the motor. And as you can see, it is really bright and I have no problem generating sufficient energy to light it up. So what are the limits of this setup? How much energy can I truly produce? And should you maybe have something like this in your backpack for emergency situations? Let's find out right after the intro. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community for creatives that offers thousands of inspiring classes. Topics include illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and much more, like for example electronics. So if you want to learn about the motor type that is featured in this video, then I would recommend you the Ultimate Electrical Machines for Electrical Engineering class by Ahmed Mahdi that I'm watching at the moment. It surely is a nice refresher. Currently Skillshare is running a special offer. So the first 1000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial. Happy learning! Now first off, it is quite obvious that turning the big rubber wheel is not the best solution, since you cannot do that continuously. Instead, we have to turn the part in the middle, with later something like a crank. And yes, I already altered this part a bit, so that the crank would easily fit. But anyway, the main problem right now is that the wires are rotating along with our axis, which would turn all of our hooked up loads into breakdancers. And that is something you always want to avoid. Now my initial idea was to open up the motor and simply reroute the motor wires. But at this point I thought this was too complicated. And thus I continued with a really stupid idea in stats, which you will see in a minute. Before that though, let me present you the magical component which more or less solves our big problem. A slip ring. Simplified speaking, it is kind of like a bearing with wires on both sides which according to their color scheme are permanently connected to one another, even when the bearing spins. This way, by soldering the motor wires to one side of the slip ring, we get our generated power on the other side without having spinning wires anymore. Brilliant! Next, I took the dimensions of the motor shafts in order to create this crank in Fusion 360, which I then 3D printed with PETG filaments. And after assembling it, it fit perfectly fine onto the shafts. And here is where it gets stupid, because I also designed and 3D printed an adapter for the slip ring, which I can wear around my arm and thus use myself as the fixation point where the wire spinning occurs. And I know it is hard to spot, but can you see the problem with this setup? Yep, the problem is me and my stupid ideas. So I scrapped this plan altogether reopened the motor, basically desoldered and ripped out all of the wires except the main three motor wires, drilled a 5mm hole into the center of the motor rotor and drilled a second 5mm hole through the stator right to where the wires are positioned. Then I used a trick with silver copper wire in order to pull the motor wires out of this newly created hole, guided them all through the hole of the rotor and put the motor back together. 
And just like that, we got the motor wires on the other side, which this time will not be in the way when I use the hand crank. So as a first proper test, I once again hooked up the 1 watt LED, which was way easier to blow up than I thought. Now of course, we could solder the motor wires to a variety of electronics parts and destroy them, but we are not cavemen anymore. Instead, I would love to store the produced energy in such a power bank, which I hope all my viewers are familiar with. This way, this motor power bank combo would be great for emergency situations, in which you for example need to charge up your phone. So time to get scientific and connect the motor wires to my oscilloscope, whose ground reference is a virtual star point I created with 10 kilo ohm resistors. While spinning the motor at a realistic speed, we are getting three sine wave voltages which are 120 degrees out of phase and come with a max voltage of around 5 to 7 volts. To turn this AC voltage into a DC voltage, we first need such a Sechspuls Brückenschaltung, which I quickly soldered up with six 1N5817 Schottky diodes, which come with a very low voltage drop, so we don't waste much power here. After hooking them up to the motor wires, you can see that we're getting a rather bumpy DC voltage on the outputs, with peaks of around 10 to 11 volts. To smooth those bumps out, you usually add an electrolytic capacitor to the outputs, but since I want an extra big buffer for this quickly changing generator system, I instead went with super capacitors. Sadly, they do not wear a superhero cape but those 5 farad ones for example can store 58 times more energy than this capacitor which comes with a similar size. But their max voltage is rather low, so I had to add 5 of them in series to make them compatible with the created output voltage. And as we crank, the capacitors slowly charge up to usable voltage values, which do vary quite a bit and are not the 5 volts we require for the power bank. So how can we efficiently convert our variable input voltage into a constant 5 volt output voltage? The answer is of course a bug boost converter that you can get from the internet for cheap. I actually tried using this exact same bug boost converter in my first video about building a hand crank generator, but failed miserably utilizing it, because after setting its output voltage to 5 volts, it works perfectly with voltages between 4 and 15 volts, but as soon as we get down to 3.3 volts and below, the output voltage quickly shoots up to probably power bank destroying voltage levels. Back then I had no good idea how to avert this below 4 volt input voltage problem, but today I'm way smarter due to YouTube's educational content they constantly fail to promote and by that I mean I watch my own video about eFuse ICs. By adding a couple of complementary components around this little guy, it hinders voltages under 4 volts and above 13.8 volts from passing through, and it limits the current to around 1.5 amps. I of course tested this eFuse IC circuit with my LabBench power supply before I permanently soldered it to a perf board onto which I also added the 6 pulse Brückenschaltung, the supercapacitors and the bug boost converter according to this schematic, which you can find in the video description if you're interested. Afterwards, it was time to chop up a micro USB cable and solder its red wire to the plus outputs and its black wire to the minus output of the converter. And finally, I hooked up the motor to the system and thus was basically done building my power bank emergency charger. But does it work? To find that out, I got my professional test setup here, which is basically just my energy multimeter, which will measure how much voltage and current flows into the power bank. So as you can see, the power bank is hooked up and now let's go for a little test ride. And hopefully as soon as we start cranking, yes, yes, it works. Oh, it goes down. Uh, there are times when it works perfectly fine when we can pump in 2.5, 2.7 watts, like right now. 
and you can actually feel that when cranking. But then there are times when it drops down to something like half a watt, something like that. Not sure if the regulator of the power bank is right now the problem. Hmm. Let's try a different power bank. Luckily, I got enough power banks to play around with. So let's see how this one may work. Ah, now it's going down again. This one does better. 2.3 watts, 1 watt, uh, 4 watts. Let's try the last one, probably the simplest one. 2 watts, not dropping down, constant power, awesome. This is exactly what I had in mind. We are pumping in around 2 watts of power into the power bank, which can be very useful for emergency situations. So I think this project turned out pretty great. Um, it is awesome that you can take a part from an obsolete product and turn it into something quite useful. And I hope you think so too. And if you enjoyed this video and want me to produce more wacky projects like this, then consider supporting me through Patreon. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Stay creative, and I will see you next time. And I will continue cranking. It is so much fun.